1954, an Anglican by the name of J.B. Phillips composed a book called Your God is Too Small. And in this book, he was concerned that many of his Anglican churchmen were uh, rather content to stay with the Sunday school education that they had gained in their youth as to their concept of God. But as they grew in life, they really didn't make any progress in their understanding of God and His ways. And so he wrote a book in which he talked about how some have perceptions of God as being a, a great policeman uh, or as something of a manager who manages minute details of life. But they were not able to grasp how this God that they learned in their Sunday school classes was one who could accommodate the modern age. When you consider that this was shortly, or some years after the Second World War, perhaps in the midst of the Korean conflict, and all kinds of advances were being made in technology and science and industry, J.B. Phillips was concerned that many of his uh, fellow believers were not perceiving how their God was keeping in touch with the advance of time, how God could uh, accommodate all these advances in human wisdom and knowledge and, uh, and science and so forth, and incorporate them into his own dominion rule. Is your God big enough? I didn't get to read through his book, uh, but I rather suspect that the approach that he took would probably lead me to consider that despite what he had written, he still did not conceive of God big enough. There's much more to be said, and I'm sure perhaps he might be among the first to acknowledge that any of our descriptions of God in many ways fall far short of who God actually is. Many in our modern age, from a modern perspective, however, have very much shrunk God from who He is as the Bible proclaims Him as the transcendent God. God, as Isaiah pictures Him, who sits on uh, the circle of the earth, ruling over the heavens and the earth. They have brought Him down into the earth itself and made Him a part of this world. They have so, made, they have so shrunk God that is a part of this world in such a way that his grandeur, his power, his exaltation is in many ways forgotten. Basically what the modern man is trying to do was to place God within the circumference of his own reason, of his own concepts. We fit God into what we believe is reasonable or rational and that is a God we can accept. But then, when we have a God who is reasonable to us, who fits in with our own standards of morality and truth and so forth, then how does this God really benefit us? Because we know all that there is to know about God. In fact, in some ways we've instructed God as to how He is to, to behave, what He is to believe, what He is to do. In the end, really modern theology flatters itself and constructs a God in His own image. It constructs a God that is a reflection of its own mind, its own values, its own beliefs. It cannot accept the God of the Bible who reveals Himself as the Holy One of Israel, the God who is the Creator of the heavens and the earth, who governs all things by His word of power, who brings all things to a conclusion, and who will judge all mankind according to, according to his own purposes, according to his own will, that kind of a God is not acceptable to the modern mind. And so we construct a God who fits into our belief systems, what we believe of God to be true, or we say that God is someone who is so mysterious that he's outside our experience and therefore, again, not to be concerned with. How big is your God? What is your conception of God? Is your understanding of God sufficient to address 
the everyday circumstances of life that you deal with? Is he big enough to handle the problems that challenge you from one day to the next? Can he handle your finances? Can he handle your health? Can he take care of the challenges within your family? Is your God sufficient to meet all of your needs? And when you look out into the world and watch your evening news and see the rise of national powers, see these wonderful pictures, these amazing pictures of distant religions and all these masses of people that become involved in the various forms of worship, and you wonder, how can the Christian faith stand before such things? Are you intimidated? Are you overwhelmed by what you see? Is your God big enough to take into account the advances of modern science? Is He big enough to deal with the powerful religions that roam the earth, the mighty powers that dominate cultures and civilizations? Is your God big enough? Isaiah addresses a people that were challenged in their view of God. In some ways, uh, they felt that God was somewhat like themselves, a distant and unconcerned. Uh, when you look at the latter part of this chapter, in the 40th chapter, we begin to get at what pastoral problem Isaiah is addressing uh, towards the end of the chapter in the 20, uh, I believe it's the 27th verse, we see here what's really on the mind of his audience. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Here is you know, where the rubber is meeting the road in the life of the people of Judea, Jerusalem. God really does not care. It does not act in time and history. He's not concerned about me and my personal situation. Now, when modern scholars take a look at what Isaiah is saying here in this 40th chapter, indeed through this whole section of this book of Isaiah, this, what they call Deutero-Isaiah sometimes, the second Isaiah, uh, they say... That what you have here is actually somebody in the exilic community, off in Babylon, years after Isaiah really lived, off in Babylon, struggling with the notion that uh, Marduk, the king, or that the god of the Babylonians came in and took care of Yahweh, defeated Yahweh and Yahweh's people, and took them captive into Babylon. And so, according to modern scholarship, what you have in Babylon is some uh, scribe, some uh, individual of faith, who's trying to wrestle with the concept of God now in this new circumstance, in this new environment. Who is the God of Israel? Is he able to handle what has happened, what has taken place? Now, I don't accept the modern point of view. I believe that Isaiah himself is a prophet foretelling what would take place, not only in the exile of Babylon, but in a far greater way. He is portraying for us the great salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ. How God has set us free from sin, from bondage to sin. It's more at the heart of what Isaiah has to say here. But in any case... Isaiah is not reconstructing his view of God to make it fit a new situation. He's not involved in an evolutionary process whereby God tries to accommodate himself to a new world reality. And so in the modern mind's point of view, God is now becoming a universal God. No longer simply a tribal deity or a national deity concerned solely about Judea, but now he's a world God who actually has the Babylonians under his control, whether you believe that or not. 